that I was able to create a chart by my theoretical schemes and uh, noticed there were holes in the chart and predicted the existence of the particles to fill up the chart. And that, that those all worked. But then the question was, was there some subunit out of which all of these particles were made, these strongly interacting particles? And uh, well, I tried it. And it came out that you could do it with uh, a certain set of particles in a quite economical way, but they would have to have electric charges plus two-thirds and minus a third. And of course, all known particles had integral charges in units of the proton or electron charge. The proton is called plus one. The electron is called minus one. And all the known particles had charges of plus one or minus one or possibly plus two or minus two and so on. And nothing had a fractional charge in those units. But these f subunits that were most for that would give the most economical scheme for making what we saw out of hidden subunits, these subunits would have charges plus two thirds and minus a third. And I was initially discouraged about that. Then I made a visit to Columbia University, and a colleague there, Bob Serber, asked me uh, whether I had ever considered this economical way of, of making subunits, considering what we then called a triplet. And I said, yes, I have considered it, but they come out to have fractional charges. And I showed him the fractional charges on a napkin at the uh, faculty club at Columbia, where we were having lunch. And, uh, and then thinking about it during the rest of the day, it occurred to me that if they were completely hidden, these particles, if they never came out, but they were permanently trapped inside the known particles, then it wouldn't cause any uh, difficulty any uh, disagreement with observation or with any fundamental theoretical idea. And so I began to put it forward.